Map calculations. In this video, you will see examples of a few of the types of calculations that you can expect to do and perform while working on maps in a typical geology classroom. So we are first going to start by looking at a type of scale that's given on a map. For this, we have what is known first as a ratio or fractional scale. You will always see these on maps as one colon and then a number. For this case we have 24,000. It's a very common ratio scale to have on a map, 1 to 24,000. What it means is that on this side where the 1 is, we are looking at on the map. So 1 centimeter, 1 inch, 1 foot, whatever you're measuring with your ruler on the map is equal to 24,000 of that same unit in real life. So if we measure 1 centimeter on the map, that's equal to 24,000 centimeters in real life. If we measure one inch on the map, that is equal to 24,000 inches in real life. So let's go ahead and make note of that so that we can have it easily available for us. So I'm going to rewrite one to 24,000. I'm going to put on map and in real life. Maybe highlight them different colors so they stand out. So one on the map is 24,000 in real life. Is what this scale is essentially saying to us. So a common question that you will see associated with ratio scales is something like how many kilometers in real life is one centimeter on the map? So again, we already know one centimeter on the map is 24,000 centimeters in real life. So that's the number we're going to start with to figure out the answer to this question. 24,000 centimeters... is what we're starting with in real life because again we're being asked about one centimeter on the map so we write that number down and what we're going to do is we're going to set up a, a visual way of canceling out units as we convert called stoichiometry so the first thing you want to do is put the number you have for us again that's 24,000 over one because anything divided by one is still itself and what we're going to do is we're going to convert from centimeters up to kilometers. So over here I'm going to write conversions that are going to be very handy for us to know. One kilometer is 1,000 meters. One meter is 100 centimeters. And one centimeter is 10 millimeters. So we will choose from these what we need based on what we're starting with and what our end point is. So for us, we're going from centimeters to kilometers means we will not need the 10 millimeter conversion because we're going from centimeters up towards kilometers this way. So the first thing that we can convert centimeters to is meters. So we need to set up a fraction next to the one that we're starting with. Go ahead and do that. And if centimeters are on the top here and we want them to cancel, we need to put them on the bottom over here. So again, we're converting from centimeters to meters. So we can put meters on top because we know we put centimeters on the bottom. The other unit has to go on top. Meters are the bigger unit of measure. So they get a 1. And from here, we can see the number on the bottom is going to be 100 centimeters. We are not done yet, because now we can cancel out our centimeters. So we put little lines through them, and our unit is in meters. But we want the answer to be in kilometers. So we have to do the same thing. Meters are on top in our second fraction. They have to go on the bottom in the third. And we're going to convert to kilometers... So we go ahead and put that information in. Kilometers are the bigger unit. They get a 1. 
And as we wrote up here, there are 1,000 meters in every kilometer. We can go ahead and cancel out the meters. And now we see the unit that we are left with is kilometers. The great thing if you're using the metric system is you have numbers like 10, 100, 1,000. So what we're starting with is 24,000. Because the numbers are on the bottom, we are going to divide. If the numbers were on top of the fraction, like if 100 was up here, we would multiply 100 by the number we started with. Again, because the numbers like 100 and 1,000 are on the bottom, we're going to divide this out, which you can do with your calculator or with the metric system. It's simply moving the decimal point. So we're going to move it five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. So we know that on real life, we are looking at 0 0.24 kilometers. So saying one centimeter equals 0 0.24 kilometers is what we would call a verbal scale. So in a ratio scale, both sides are the same, centimeters, centimeters. In a verbal scale, the units are different on each side. One centimeter on the map is 0 0.24 kilometers in real life. Again, called a verbal scale, something important for you to know as you go about the lab. The next and most frequent calculation that we do with topographic maps is calculating slope, also called gradient. This is very common because contour lines show changes in elevation, so we can easily calculate rise over run, uh, which we're going to call something slightly different in our equation this time. So, the equation for gradient is gradient, and we're going to use the example meters per kilometer. It could also be feet per mile. So whatever unit your elevation is in, if it's in the metric unit, meters, your uh, change in distance, or delta L, has to stay in the metric system. Uh, we don't do feet per kilometers or meters per mile, so make sure you're in the same uh, system of units. So gradient, this case is going to be meters per kilometer, is delta, that's the triangle, E over delta L. Delta means change. So delta E is the change in elevation, which we're going to find in just a second. Delta L is the distance between the points, or the change of location laterally, the distance between points A and B here. So let's first start by figuring out delta E. So we are not given the contour interval on this map. However, we can figure out what the elevation change between each line on the map is based on the index contour lines we have here. So remember, the index contour lines, the bold ones, are every fifth line. So what we need to do to figure out our contour interval is look at the change in elevation between the index contour lines. So the one above is 200, or the one in the north. The one in further south is 100. So we take and subtract the two so that we figure out between index contour lines, we are looking at 100 meters of elevation change. We then need to figure out how many intervals or how many steps are there between the index contour lines. To do this, do not count the lines between them count the spaces between the lines. So I'm going to go ahead and write those in. So we see there are five spaces between the lines of our bolded index contour lines. So what that means is we're going to take the number we got here by again subtracting the numbers on the two index contour lines and we're going to divide it by five. So 100 divided by 5 is 20. What that tells us is every line is going to be a difference of 20 from the line next to it. We can double check this by adding 20 for each line to make sure our numbers line up. 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, 200. If the numbers don't match when you get to the next in, uh, index contour line, 
you have not calculated the interval correctly. So that's kind of your double check. So let's start with delta E, the change in elevation. We need to get the elevation of point A and point B. The V on the index contour line here, along with all the other contour lines, again is pointing uphill. So it tells us we're getting higher in elevation as you go north on this map. Our index contour line is 200. Our interval is 20. So we are one line above 200, which would make the elevation of point A 220 meters. For letter B, the, again, V is pointing uphill, so we are going downhill from 100. We are two lines below 100. Each line is 20, so 100, 80, 60. So we know letter B has an elevation of 60 meters. So to calculate this, I'm going to move to a second board, delta E. We have the elevation of point A, 220 meters, minus, because we need to find the difference, the elevation of point B, which is 60 meters. So we take 220, the elevation of the higher point, minus 60, the elevation of the lower point. And again, you can do this on a calculator or in your head. But it's important that you show all your work. You always have to show all work because if you did something wrong, showing your work allows us to see where you went wrong, uh, which allows us to give you more credit for what you did correctly versus just putting a number at the end because you did everything in your head or you didn't write it down and it's just a wrong number. We don't know how you got it, where you went wrong, so you'll receive a lot less credit. So we do the subtraction. 220 meters minus 60 meters is 160 meters. We have now figured out delta E, which we can go ahead and write down in our equation, again, for G. Delta E above delta E, so we'll write that on here. So that it is set up and ready to go. Now we need to find delta L. To find delta L, we have a few steps that we need to take. Step one when finding delta L is to measure with your ruler how many centimeters are between points A and B. Always use the centimeter side of your ruler as long as you stick to that and always use the centimeter side of your ruler. This will work. And the centimeter side of the ruler is typically easier to use because each centimeter is broken up into one-tenth which are millimeters, rather than inches that can be broken up into quarters, eighths, sixteenths, or thirty seconds, thirty seconds, which are more difficult to enter into a calculator. So measure with your ruler A to B. Let's go ahead and do that. So when I take the centimeter side of the ruler and I set it on here for the size of my image, which again yours might be different because your image might be smaller, so you might not have the same number as me, that's okay. I am getting 8 centimeters, 8.0. You could have 4.3, 3.4, whatever it's coming off on your ruler from A to B. That's what you should write down. So, first thing for delta L is measuring A to B on your ruler, which in this case is 8.0 centimeters. So we've measured A to B with our ruler. That's going to go on top of something else. So where we're doing the calculation, 8.0 centimeters on top of what we're measuring next, which is the whole scale measured with your ruler. So we have a scale on the map. We're not just going to measure one kilometer. We're going to measure the entire thing all the way across with our ruler. Again, we're using the centimeter side of our ruler. Your number might be different again because the size of your image might be different, but I am getting 4.4 centimeters. So I need to write that where it goes, which is A to B on top, the whole scale measured with our ruler on the bottom. The next thing that we need off of the scale, so we've measured A to B with our ruler, 
We've measured the whole scale with our ruler. We then multiply by the number on the end of the scale. This, again, we're working in the metric system, is going to be in kilometers. So we measured from 0 all the way over to 3. So we are looking at 3 kilometers. We write that. right here. So we will see for delta E our distance our change in elevation is in meters. Delta L we want our gradient to be meters per kilometer. So this is a good way of double checking. We have canceled out centimeters because one's on top, one's on the bottom, they cancel out. The unit we're going to be left with is kilometers. So you can go ahead and plug this into a calculator. We take 8.0 divided by 4.4 .4 times 3 and we find that we have 5.45 kilometers as delta L. Now again your numbers might be a little bit different because the size of your image is different in your packet but as long as you're doing the same steps you're going to be okay. So this 5.45 kilometers is delta L, which for our equation for slope, has to go underneath delta E. So we go ahead and take the 5.45 kilometers and we put it on the bottom in our fraction for figuring out the gradient. We have our last step is dividing out these numbers so we take the 160 meters for delta E and we divide it by 5.45 kilometers for delta L and we end up with a number that is 29.36 meters per kilometer that means as you move from letter A to letter B in the map area you are going to experience, if you're going from B to A, an uphill walk that rises about 26, what was our number, 29.36 meters for every kilometer. Or if you're going from A to B, you're going to be decreasing in elevation about 29 meters for every kilometer that you walk. Calculating slope is something that we will do several times throughout the semester, so be sure to come back and reference this video if you ever need to be uh, brushed up on it.